our top story at 6. A business devastated on April 27th is dealing with another terrible setback. Tom's Cabinets in Alberta City has been closed for repairs since the tornado. The work was finished yesterday. Then, just hours later, the business was consumed by fire. WVOA was on the scene as it happened, and today, WVOA's Lindsay Price was with the business owner as he surveyed the damage. I've been trying to get my mind off of it all day, and it hadn't been an easy thing to do. This scene is what Tom Rigney is talking about. A fire destroyed Tom's cabinets, whose business of 16 years, Tuesday night. Wednesday was supposed to be Rigney's first normal work day in months. Instead, he spent it digging through the rubble again. The guys had just, just finished restoring the building uh, yesterday, did the last stuff on the building yesterday from the tornado. And, uh, and then to come down here and see it in such a mess again is <laughs> really, really kind of devastating. I don't think it's anything salvable. You know, just it's it to me. It looks like everything you know just charred. Firefighters still aren't sure what caused the fire, but Rigney says one thing's for sure: he will rebuild. Yeah, I'm gonna have a shop. I, I got, you know, I enjoy woodworking, and uh, that's pretty much all I've done throughout my life. And uh, so. Uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have me a shop. It may not be as big a one, but I'm going to have a shop somewhere. Rigney says the immediate next steps are up to his insurance company, but he wants to move quickly. Hopefully quicker than I've been this time from the tornado, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I would hope in a couple of three months, maybe if I, if I can find me something that's uh, suitable that I can rent, you know, uh, as opposed to having to build something, you know, uh, I'm sure that I could get back in business a lot quicker. Meanwhile, Tom Rigney asked the community for one thing. Uh, yeah. Keep me in the prayers. In Alberta, Lindsay Price, WVUA News. Rigney also says he's just, he's one of just a few businesses in Tuscaloosa that meets demand for the product he sells. Beginning this weekend, Tuscaloosa police are putting a stop to most funeral escorts. WVUA's Travis Leader tells us how concerns over police safety is playing a role in ending a long-standing tradition. Tuscaloosa police are done taking risks by escorting funerals. It's an officer safety issue that officers are having to drive uh, too fast to try and block intersections and it's a risk that the police department is no um, not willing to take anymore. Officer Trevor Phillips died while conducting a funeral escort in May. Officer safety was a concern before, but Phillips' death caused the force to act. It's been discussed long before Officer Phillips died doing an escort. Once he died doing the escort, it brought to light more issues of is this worth it? And the Tuscaloosa Police Department, the City Council, have determined that it's no longer worth doing funeral escorts. Funeral directors understand the need for safety. But they also say if you can't block traffic, people will be left behind. Those other half of the people that were not directly uh, in the right position when a light or a stop sign change or whatever, they'll be just left without the direction to the cemetery. And if someone else does the escorts, they will have to obey all traffic laws. People may hire private security agencies or private escort services, however, any of these escorts cannot stop traffic and have to obey all traffic laws, so nobody will be able to stop traffic for a funeral escort. Reporting in Tuscaloosa, Travis Leader, WVUA News. And Blankley says that police will still do some escorts for military and fallen officers. City leaders will determine those on a case-by-case -case basis, and police will continue to escort the University of Alabama and visiting football teams on game days. Crimson Tide Pride is reaching fever pitch with only three days left till the official start of football. A live look for you now over Bryant Denny Stadium. This is coming from our WVA Tower camera. This is where Bama will take on Kent State this Saturday. Kickoff set for 11:20 a.m. The game will be carried on the SEC Network. Jenna Johnson with UA Game Day Operations tells us they're expecting about 120,000 fans to pack the campus and they'll be looking for a place to park. Johnson says this year fans can save some time and also a few bucks by printing some passes online. 
We have a new print at home pass, and this is going to benefit our fans who park on our east side of campus. Actually, it's a $5 discount if you print it at home. And you can find much more on game day changes just by going to our website, WVUATV.com. Click numbers and links and look under the sports tab. New at 6, an Alabama soldier serving in Afghanistan can now show his state pride with an Alabama flag. The soldier's first request for a state flag was denied. He told the governor's office he wanted to display the state flag at his camp near Kandahar. But the governor's office told the soldier they could not afford to give the flags away, which cost around $11 on the Internet. But now Governor Bentley has ordered a change in policy to allow service members to obtain free state flags if they're serving in a combat zone. Bentley, himself a veteran, said the policy against sending flags to our troops made no sense. New at 6, one day after being sworn in, Alabama's new Chief Justice Charles Malone announces he will run for a full term in the next election. Malone, who's a native of Tuscaloosa, announced his campaign today. In 2000, Chief Justice Malone was elected circuit judge in the 6th Judicial Court, 6th Judicial Circuit, I should say. He became Governor Bentley's Chief of Staff earlier this year when former Chief Justice Sue Bell Cobb resigned then. Bentley tapped Malone to be her replacement. Malone also announced today that he is rescinding Cobb's order to cut back on weeks of civil and criminal trials because of budget problems. The Chief Justice says the state's courts can find other ways to save rather than delaying trials. New at 6, WVUA is covering Greene County, where electronic bingo is back at Green Track. An attorney for Green Track said they are reopening because court rulings mean a search that led to the closings was illegal. Officials say the state could ask the courts for more warrants, but that has not happened as of this time. As you may recall, on July of last year, former Governor Bob Riley's gambling task force raided Green Track and removed 850 electronic bingo machines. Riley said those machines were illegal. Meanwhile, the current Attorney General Luther Strange has released this statement to WVUA in response to Green Track reopening, and it states, we trust that Green Track will abide by Alabama law, and if they do not, appropriate law enforcement action will be taken. United Way of West Alabama kicked off its new campaign today. The United Way helps lots of organizations all across West Alabama meet the needs of our community. Hundreds of volunteers work every year all across our area, including helping with recovery from the April storms. This year's goal is to raise $3 million. Organizers say around 87 cents of every dollar goes into service. United Way of West Alabama's president, Homer Butler, says the need for support is really high right now. Well, they, their, their needs are ongoing. They, they are providing services year-round regardless of what the weather is. And, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be here when we're all gone, and uh, it's important that we continue to fund them and uh, give them the opportunity to provide uh, the services and programs that the community needs so badly. You can help support the work of the United Way of West Alabama with just the click of a mouse. To make a, an online donation, just go to WVUATV.com, click, click Numbers and Links, and look under our Community section.